What's up, everybody? Dale Most, host, filmmaker, creator, doing a lot of things right now. On today's episode of Ever Forward, uh, we talk about boundaries. We talk about finding your truth. We talk about how to understand the difficult situations in life that allow us to keep moving forward. What's up, everybody? Welcome back to Everford Radio. I'm your host, Chase Tuning, and today I'm sitting down with former professional athlete. You might have seen him on TV. You might have seen him now doing even bigger, cooler things in the world of health, fitness, wellness with the Special Olympics. And, uh, you know, I don't even know where to begin, Dale, because you just, you've done so much, you're doing so much, but the important thing is we're here, we're here now. Welcome yeah. To the and show. and I'm, I'm grateful to be here. Uh, obviously very excited to hop yeah. on. It's been a while since I've done a podcast. Um, you didn't give me a lot of homework. Yeah. Groundwork to focus yeah. on. I was doing my research. I'm like, shit, this guy's been in my, in the podcast world a little I've, bit. I've been in that like focused yeah. stage and it's been one of the best things for mm. me. So the good thing is we can talk about all of it, uh, yeah. during this session. You know, so that kind of leads me into, I try to keep it fresh, kind of keep it really, you know, recent. Mm -hmm. You posted this quote on your Instagram store the other day that I think kind of pairs well with what you're talking about. You knew, you've you had your head down a little bit, you've mm -hmm. been doing the work, you're building a lot of cool things, which we'll get into some of it. This quote from Joshua Graham, I survived because the fire inside me burned brighter than the fire around me. Yeah. What was the inspiration behind sharing that? Uh, I, I mean, that's one of, one of, my favorite quotes without a doubt. And I think, you know, when I first saw it, it really related to just me as a kid coming mm -hmm. up, um, an environment that I was in, um, that seemed so chaotic, you know, there was so much going on and I don't know. I, I, I think that it prepared me so much at a young age for, life now and to be able mm. to handle things um and be able to handle th things and keep moving forward right so i'm a firm believer that you know the world keeps moving and i've seen that from a young age um you know by the time i was in high school mm. i had to prepare and come to the reality that you know i may never see my father again unless it was behind bars you know i had to prepare to lose almost everyone in my family, whether mm -hmm. that was, uh, you know, as through through death or, um, you know, being taken away from us, uh, and that's just because my my parents really struggled mm -hmm. um, at a young age. Uh, or when I was younger, um, my dad suffered uh, from alcohol and heroin addictions. Mm -hmm. um, spent a lot of time in and out of prison up to the time I was twenty one years old, um, and even with all of those things. I think one of the greatest gifts that my parents uh, instilled into me, and they told they've told this to you know all my sisters as well, um, is like you're meant for so much more. Just because we're going through situations and things like this in life, just know that you're meant for so much more. And it was profound because it allowed me to see them as human mm -hmm. and understand that they loved us and they would do they did everything to keep our family together and yeah. provide for us. But it was the reality that people go through different things in life. And for me, um, I think that accepting and seeing that with the people I loved and cared about the most um, is just something that allowed me to have an understanding mm -hmm. uh, approach to you know anything that comes my way. Man, I didn't think I was going to get my feel so soon in this conversation, <laughs> but I mean, the second you kind of shared that with me, it took me back to a very similar moment I had around the same age with my father. I was sharing with you, uh, I, actually, forgive me, I don't know if I told you this directly, but ever forward was my father's mantra. Yep. Yep. Uh, yeah. And, you know, he had a bout with ALS, um, he lost the bout, obviously, it's a terminal illness, but... I had this moment, this kind of realization moment as well, just to kind of share with you, you know, this backstory as well. When he told me that he was sick and he was dying, I had just left home. I was 18 years old. I had just joined the military. I was thousands of miles away. Mm -hmm. Now challenging my decision to leave home 
now challenging my decision to, you know, did I make the right choice? Am I on the right path? How could I leave my family during yep. this time of need? And I actually began to, to separate from the military. And once my father found out, literally the last few days that he could physically walk and talk by himself, he flew across the country to not talk me out of that decision, but mm -hmm. to just do exactly what it sounds like your family did with you. Yeah. To go, hey, Chase, no, you are meant for so much more. Just because my story is ending this way doesn't mean that yours has to end before it ever begins. Yeah. And man, talk about talk about a sobering experience when you're 19, 20, you were 21 years old. No, I mean, this, this honestly happened, like some of my first memories are with my dad in prison. Um, and wow. this is something that happened, you know, and again, I, I, I'm very happy to say that my dad has, has definitely changed his life around. It's awesome. Um, but I remember like seeing that at such a young age and I'm Dale Jr. You mm -hmm. know, my dad's name is Dale. Um, but I've always had to be the man of the house. Mm. And I have four sisters, I'm the only boy. Um, and I've understood and taken that responsibility. And I think, you know, going back to the quote, when it, the fire inside me was like, I had to keep going because there's nothing that could hurt worse or burn me, mm. you know, mm -hmm. like at my core yeah. than if I let my family down and if I gave up. And I, I don't know how to do that. You know, I can't yeah. do that if I did that like our family wouldn't be together. So was that then kind of, was that then the drive behind not only just doing something with your life, but doing it at the highest level, pursuing professional sports? Was it, I gotta achieve and perform at that level or, or bust? Honestly, it was, I just wanted to, to make my family proud. Mm. Um, I, I will say I, I don't operate out of fear. I think we all have fearful moments. Um, but you know, sometimes our, our greatest strength is our greatest weakness, mm -hmm. but one of my strengths, uh, is being able to handle a lot of very, very stressful things and keep moving forward because I didn't have, have any option. But, you know, I, I also am someone who's very motivated by possibilities. Um, I'm not afraid of failing. I'm afraid. I, I just want to make the right choice. Mm -hmm. Um, but sports was naturally something that I always gravitated to. My mom played on a U.S. Uh, national basketball team that traveled the globe. Oh, wow. uh, she, she was my idol. And in South Dakota, where I grew up, um, it was very, very segregated. We were mm -hmm. one of the only, uh, we were the only uh, biracial family, you the know, only. black kids only. Wow. Uh, my mom's side, uh, you know, my grandfather told her to never come ho back home uh, because of biracial marriage. Shame. And from the time... I was a kid, our entire family and myself was always judged. Mm. Uh, we were always outcasts. You know, I heard, I've been called nigga more than uh, I know what to do with by the time I was in elementary school. And those things never like phased me, I, mm. you know, because I knew what we had as a family, but I also think I, I love sports so much because that was a barrier that opened a lot of doors, right? And I think people saw me and my family in a different way because they could relate and there was some excitement and I've always played at a very, very high level. And it was honestly my escape and my re release from anything else that was going on in my life. So that, that was like therapy for me. Would you say in your experience, stepping out into the field, putting on that Jersey, hell, even practicing just, I mean, you're at the top of the top, right? Yeah, yeah. And you know, I've had some other NFL players on the show. Uh, one of my best friends is a former NFL guy mm -hmm. and he had a very different approach to it. It doesn't sound like it's the same, but you know what? When you put on the jersey, you step out on the field, you still have your teammates. You got yep. thousands of people cheering for you. You've got cameras, you've got eyes on. How did you not get caught up like a lot of people do when you're when like when you made it, you know? Because it sounds like you were still were very grounded in yeah. your experience there. Um I don't know. I I think it, it goes back to um my childhood, mm. you know, I knew that people could, you could do everything right and people could judge you. Mm. Um, they could, you know, hate you for the wrong reasons. Um, and sports was my outlet and it's something that I wanted to do. And I did it not for notoriety. Mm -hmm. It's because I love the work. I love the, the teammates. I love the competition. 
Um, and that's something that I always held on to. And I also was very aware that like things in life can change in an instant. Mm. And, you know, what's promised today or what you think you have today isn't always there tomorrow. Um, and I've also experienced just in life how quickly people's opinions can change, right? So how fast we can be swayed, huh? Yeah, yeah, without a doubt, without a doubt. Um, but I, I never had a fear of getting caught up. Um, and I think I've been fortunate to be pretty grounded throughout mm -hmm. my entire life. And a, a lot of that goes to my parents, mm -hmm. you know, even if we had some very stressful situations in life, uh, um, yeah. you know, scrape at the bottom of the barrel, yeah. they raised us right. And we always had unconditional love. You know, I, I feel, I feel that I relate to that a lot. And it kind of reminds me of in certain circumstances, I've been asked, you know, how do you deal with this pressure? How do you deal with mm -hmm. that failure? How did you deal with death? How did you deal with all these things that my story has been? And correct me if I'm wrong, man, but it kind of feels like I mean, we don't have the answer. It's just mm -hmm. ultimately has to be gratitude for the nature and nurture we had. Yep. How do you kind of wrap your head around that? Have you and kind of gone? I don't have a clear answer as to how I can endure such terrible, difficult things. Yeah. It's just because of those mm -hmm. before me. How do you even translate that to some people? You know, I, I was thinking about this before the podcast yeah. and there was a long time where I was like, damn, I feel so numb. Like I don't have emotion. Mm -hmm. And over time I realized I was not numb. Mm -hmm. I was just conditioned to endure some, some very heavy moments. I was seasoned. I was experienced. Wow. That's huge. And I think, hmm. I think what really did it for me, um, was, oh, I lost it for a moment. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I, I'm just kind of diving really deep cause it's, you know, I have it's, a it's, moment that it's a big question. Yeah. I mean, you're, you're looking at your life and you're going, okay, I'm not numb. I, I'm not, succumbing to these things it's just actually who i am and you know I, I got this kind of thing yeah and i think because i could approach things because the first experience was with my my parents mm. and our situation in life and i could pull myself out of that as a kid and understand that there's a lot of other things that were really that young that young mm. like and not judge them mm. and not blame them and really just take an approach of understanding, it has really, really allowed me to navigate a lot of different things in life. And, you know, I look at what I've been through now, I'll be 35, mm. but I, I've dealt with, you know, a lot of shit over the years. Um, you know, I, I remember, um, you know, I, ha I had to pull my mom off life support. Um, mm. You know, it was something that I knew my dad couldn't do. It would have ruined him. Uh, my sister, I couldn't put that responsibility on her. Um, you know, even as a kid, my sister, Amber, who has physical and intellectual disabilities, like, which happy were, birthday, by the way. So oh birthday. yeah. Yeah. It was, was it her like birthday. yesterday as we yesterday, were yeah, the yeah. big 40. Happy birthday, Amber. But it, we, we had to prepare for her to lose her life numerous times as, as a kid. Um, and I think again, the way. I was able to endure is because I didn't do it alone. Mm. I think mm -hmm. the more I think about it, because we all had to go and do this together. Um, and we knew that you couldn't do it alone. So it just prepared me at a younger, mm. young age. And it also, the darkest moments and the lowest moments that I mm. thought I had at that time, I realized that they passed, right? Damn. Yeah. yeah. You know, I might be I mean, reflecting on them. I'm not still in them suffering yeah. through them. Yeah. And I, I feel like suffering is, is a choice. Mm. Um, now that doesn't mean that you're, you're not going to be in it, but I also just made it a point to make conscious efforts and do little things that strengthen my mental health yeah. and help get me out of that. You know, that's a part of human experience, right? Suffering is inevitable. It is it, without a doubt. We're all going to suffer. We're going to stub our toe in the morning mm -hmm. and it's going to hurt like hell all day. Or on a serious notes, we're going to experience death. We're going to experience illness. We're going to have to make life or death Choices. Yeah, literally. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I I remember that moment, and the, that that was the hardest thing because the 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 purest and the most you know beautiful thing mm -hmm. in my world 
Um, I got a call one morning out of nowhere. She's like, I don't know what's happening. Uh, my, my organs are shut, shutting down. I'm going to be on four forms of life support. Um, I just want to tell you I love you because I'm not going to be able to see you. Um, and I remember I was supposed to fly back the day before and I changed my flight. Um, and I was, I was able to let that go uh, and not take on the regret and the guilt, um, which, which took a lot of work. Um, and I remember after my mom's memorial service, I flew out the next day back to work. Not a lot of people knew. Um, and it wasn't because I was trying to hide anything. Mm. I was able to take that approach of, damn, like how could, mm. like I'm so grateful that I had 29 years of my life with a love like this. Damn. And I know that most people don't experience mm. that and that's rare. And I know how my family affects people and how I affect people. And that's because of her mm. and that's living. So just being able to shift that perspective mm. um, in a lot of different ways has 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 truly helped me understand and navigate some of these situations. Um, this is powerful stuff, man. And you are you cool to talk about this a little bit more, bro? Expand I'm, a little I, bit. Yeah, this is. Uh, you seem like you're very well composed, and that tells me you have worked through this, and you have a lot of yeah, yeah. a lot of emotional safety around this conversation. So yeah, if you're cool with it, I'm safe. I'm safe talking okay. about I I any of these things. Because, I mean, hell, I'm starting to get teared up here, man, because it, it just reminds me of a place where I was not. Mm -hmm. You know, you said you buried your mother at 29. She passed at 20. You were 29. Yeah. I buried my father. I was 19. Mm -hmm. And I'm just thinking of the similarities yet differences in our story. And, you know, insert my story with anyone else listening that's not you and your approach at that time. I went back three days later to being an active duty soldier yeah. and I shut it off because I had to, at least I told, that was what I told myself. Yeah. I told myself, Chase, you don't have time to grieve. You don't have time to, to dwell on that. You don't have time to really go through what it means to lose your father, your best friend yeah. because duty calls. Yep. Then about 12, 13 years later, that reared its ugly head mm -hmm. through PTSD and just poor mental health. And then I chose to face it. Yeah. But I'm just curious, man, because this, this is what I love about the show and connecting with people like Dude, this. And, and that's brave of you. Oh, I, you. I don't pe thank you. think people say that. Like, that's a brave, courageous choice. It was to choose to turn back and face that, mm -hmm. to literally go running full force towards it. I mean, it's not an easy decision, but I can tell you right now, it's the most liberating one I've ever made. Yep. So I, I, I received that, man. Thank you. Mm -hmm. But I'm just so blown away at, at just the dynamic difference between similar experiences, yep. but yet the mindset, the approach to that suffering that in the moment can really set you on a different path or like in my case or many other cases, maybe one day you'll choose to turn and face it. And then, you know, the mindset shift comes later. Mm -hmm. um, I didn't really have a question in there, but you know, no, no, expanding. but like even just what you're saying and just sharing perspective in, in opening up the conversation for your experience, mm -hmm. you know, which thank you for that. And, um, you know, I think again, it, it'd be naive to say I still didn't have to work through it. And I'm, I'm a pro at burying things, mm -hmm. you know, but, um, in that moment, which I, 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 I never thought it would be that way. I remember like I was in an airport, I'm very spiritual, but mm. I, I was flying out from after my mom's memorial service and I was sitting in the airport. I was still pretty low, but like an eerie calm. Mm -hmm. Um, and then I remember I was like, it's like my entire chest was filled with air, like my lungs, like someone just breathed life into me. And for me, that was like, damn, that is that, really, that's my mom dude. is, is here with yeah, me. Yeah. And then I just felt so, yeah. so calm and shit. <laughs> I, I feel like that was her message Beautiful. saying to me, like, you're going to be okay. And I also realized the number one thing I wanted to protect in this world was finally with someone who could mm -hmm. protect her better than I could. And that was God. And I could focus on myself um mm -hmm. probably for really like the first time in my life um because i, I had taken care of my family made more money than my family mm -hmm. since the time i was you know i was in college paying bills at home doing all those things um which i'd never bat an eye at and it's, mm -hmm. it's what we had to do as a family um but i felt that in a, a deeper spiritual way mm -hmm. and it changed my life forever 
dude, I got so much love for you. Even more <laughs> so already. Dude, like, <laughs> that's that's powerful, man. Thank you so much. Yeah. Um, all right, well, let's shift gears a little bit, okay? Um, you went from being a professional athlete, NFL. You had another life transition to kind of, you made a choice to kind of put yourself in the limelight in other different ways. Yeah, yeah. You know, from, I mean, NFL, that's the limelight as well. But what was the calling for you to want to continue to, I don't I'd say the term public figure, but just, you know, to continue to put yourself out there for the public to see, yeah, yeah. to then use that in a way to support your mission and so many other positive missions, man. Yeah. I, I think like if I do something in life, like I do it because I want to do mm -hmm. it. Um, I was great at sports. I love the competition. I love the grind. There's never a time I'm afraid of working hard. Um, but I was a basketball player in college, transitioned. Mm -hmm. I played one year of football in college. I realized like I loved the competing and I loved all that, but I didn't necessarily love football, right? Mm -hmm. So when I stepped away, um, you know, it was it wasn't as difficult a decision for me. Um, and I wanted to build my life on my own terms in a different way and just create something new. Um, I've always wanted to be a storyteller. Mm. I've always wanted to direct and produce. And I think for so long in my life, I was so afraid to share my story with the outside world. Why's that? Um, I didn't think they deserved to hear it. It was never mm. about being judged. I didn't, I didn't think they deserved to hear it. And also, I think if I shared it in the way um, it was meant to be shared, they wouldn't even understand that. I understand. Gotcha. Yeah. yeah. Um, and I've since come, you know, grown from that, but, uh, you know, I, obviously I was on reality TV, um, at that phase of my life, uh, I was doing the coolest shit I've ever done. Um, I was traveling the world. Mm. Business was good. I was a top model at one of the top agencies in the world. Um, I was producing, um, and I had gotten out of a long-term relationship about two and a half years before that, okay. um, with someone who I, you know, at the time thought I would spend the rest of my life with. Um, and I really, you know, just kind of dove into focusing on myself, but I realized I was doing all of these things, but I, I had nobody to share it with, you know, mm -hmm. I was on the outside. You would think I would be so fulfilled, but I was like hollow inside and you're coming home to share the day's adventures with no one yeah you know well i can't talk about it with my family as much because they'll never understand right, you know yeah, like yeah, i'm yeah. at an event <laughs> like oprah's event yeah and like, or i'm because my life was so different new york is such a different beast and i came from the midwest mm -hmm. and also these are things that i was just kind of creating i didn't have a roadmap. i was just doing things that i i believed would get me to the the end goal and just trying new things mm -hmm. but um I was nominated by uh, Ty Ty, who's like a little sis to me here. Um, and I was like, there's no way I'm doing that. Mm -hmm. Like, um, but I was like, if, you know, I'll go through the process, we'll see what happens. For the TV show. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and at the end of the day, like it finally came down to it. They, they wanted me to be on it after a bunch of auditions. Yeah. Four days before, I was like, you know what? Fuck it. Like, <laughs> like I'm not what afraid. What do I have to lose? It was that, but I was also, I was searching for something mm. to fill up like my soul because I, I just felt kind of hollow. Mm. Um, and a lot of times people will ask, do I regret anything or anything? Not one bit. Mm. Like that was one of the most transformative experiences of my life. And I can honestly say like, I went on that for the right reason. I, mm. I couldn't tell you what happened on the time before the show, before I was on it. I couldn't even tell you what happened the rest of the season when I was on it. Yeah. Um, I was there because I wanted to be there. Um, and I was looking for something mm -hmm. that I, I couldn't find in any other phase of my life. It's so wild. You get to a point in a variety, different forms of success, right? Of yeah. personal fulfillment. And I think the most human, the most common response then unless you're a narcissist or something like that, but it's just like, shit, you know, I, a lot of those. Yeah. I, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I need somebody or I want somebody. Yeah. I want somebody to share this experience with. And I think to take it even a step further, when you do find that somebody it's, I want to share my life with them, yeah, yeah. but I want them to live their life and have their personal fulfillment 
and then want me. Yeah, yeah. I want that reciprocity of sharing. Yeah, yeah, for know? sure. Yeah, and and I think that's spot on, and I think that's what we're like. Everyone is looking for, right? Yeah. Um, in, in some capacity, um, and, and you probably just don't know it. <laughs> yeah, 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 or or it's just at a different time mm -hmm. in your life, mm -hmm. and um, I will say, like, opening myself up to the world wasn't difficult because, like, I was just being myself. And I also made a conscious choice. I I talk with my pastor always about intentional transformation. Mm. I was very intentional and committed to saying like, hey, like it's all out there. Mm -hmm. I told my family before the show, um, I'm going to tell our story. Yeah. And even though it didn't get shown, but I was like, just know, like it's all out there. Mm -hmm. um, and they're like, we have nothing to hide from mm -hmm. or be ashamed of. Um, and that, that was really, really big for me. And, you know, after the fact, um, I think one thing I really, really learned from that experience, uh, was the importance of setting boundaries. Mm -hmm. And, um, that's something that I've had difficulties doing, especially in my relationships, because everything else in the world, like it's not phasing me. Like, mm -hmm. you yeah, know, yeah, I, yeah, yeah. I think, I think about the, uh -huh. the memes where people are like, <laughs> You know, you see like life's throwing all this yeah. at you and they're doing like parkour and jumping around <laughs> and all that. But for me, how I believe I walk through life yeah. is like all that shit is happening, but I'm in that straight line and it's just bouncing off. Mm -hmm. me. Um, the only times in my life where I've pro probably steered or really been able to get affected is with my heart. Mm -hmm. um, and I wouldn't change that for the world, but that's why boundaries were so important. Um, and I think because I, I saw all the things that my mom had to go through growing up, I had somewhat of oh, a not profound perspective, man. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. And I had a naive belief that, you know, love is the foundation. I believe mm -hmm. that with whole wholeheartedly, but like I had this na naive belief that you could make it work with, with anyone. Um, but there's so much mm -hmm. that goes into that. And I think that's like a maturity thing as well. Um, but I also know like I wanted so badly mm -hmm. to be that type of man for someone because of what I saw as a kid. Sure. Yeah. Um, and that's, again, I'm, you know, reverting back, but that's where also through that process, I learned how to set boundaries that have helped me in every aspect of life. Um, and probably accelerate, you know, um, accelerate a lot of advancement, uh, in my mental health, personal growth and really? all those things. Really? Yeah. Yeah. You know, that's so cool to hear you say, because I can relate to that. We were just talking before we hit record about, I feel like the last year, if not two, for me, boundaries have been theme work. Everything. It's been, it's been great. And for someone to hear you say you're setting boundaries, but yet accelerating, mm -hmm. it kind of sounds like, hold on, hold on, how are you drawing a line in the sand and moving forward? So how have boundaries been an accelerator for you? For me, I think it, when, you, when you have your priorities in the line, it, it's very easy to set your boundaries. Um, and I think not I think I know mm. that by setting boundaries and it, it's a constant work in progress, mm -hmm. I've allowed myself to grow because I've created a safe space and I know my limitations or mm -hmm. I know that this is as far as I'll go in this space because once I get past this point, I know it's not healthy for me. Wow. Okay. And it's taken a lot of work though. I, I work with a performance coach. I've worked with a therapist. Um, I, I, who's been amazing for me. Um, and a lot of the work is that, is how to set healthy boundaries. And I know for me, uh, my health mm -hmm. is physical and mental, is my priority, my relationship and my career. My family um, and spirituality, mm -hmm. I, I don't always put those as like priority because like that's certain, you know? Oh, wow, I like that. I that's like that. certainty for me, so. What do you mean by family and spirituality are, are certainty for you as in? It's it's you, the it's true always thing there, I, or it, you, you know you always have it with you, or it's like that is my soul. Okay, that that is what gets me up in the morning, hmm. um, and I, I know that I'll never take that for granted. But even with them, I've had to set boundaries with my family uh, very heavily. Hmm. Um, uh, you know, I say I'll do anything in the world for you, but if I don't see you actively working to change your state or do the things necessary to improve hmm. your yeah. mental health or your situation, like I can't take on all those responsibilities. Um, and that started when my mom died because I, I, I wanted to help my family grieve and I realized I can't, I can't grieve for you. Mm -hmm. I got to grieve on my own. I mm mean, -hmm. um, that's where it really, really started. 
what a guy. What a, I'm just like, <laughs> damn, what a, what a fucking guy. <laughs> um, no, it's like, I've, I, 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 I don't know. Life is, life is, life is crazy. Yeah. Um, the foundational pieces that I, I've been given that God has blessed me with. Yeah. Um, uh, and I, I think the tough moments again have allowed me to look at things a little bit differently, but, um, I know my best years are ahead of me. I know the best of my life is ahead of me. Um, but well, with I, that, with that choice and that approach, absolutely they are. Yeah, yeah. it has to be like yeah. because like this is not it. Um, and but it's taken work to mm -hmm. even get in that mental state to believe that and to know that and have that confidence um, to say that with conviction. Mm -hmm. And I can say that with certainty as well. I know that I know that in all areas of my life, the best years are ahead of me. You know, that kind of I wanted to pull up another question here, but I think you kind of already getting towards it. I wanted to pick your brain on what motivates you to keep such a well-trained body and mind. You mm -hmm. you've really kind of talked about my words, not yours. You've got like a holistic approach here to kind yeah. of taking care of your life in a lot of different ways. But it sounds like family and spirituality are, are, are your kind of certainties. Is that your, your through line, your why, and what keeps you able to keep everything else together? Yeah. I think the reason I focus so much on my mental health and physical health is the world I live in is crazy. Like, it, you know, I'm traveling all mm -hmm. over. I spent, I've spent three quarters of my time on the road the last year, but I know that if I can commit, commit to my health and protect that, then everything else gets better. Mm -hmm. Um, I also have recognized, and this is through a lot of work, um, you know, from a mental health perspective, and it, it goes back to the boundaries and stuff, because I would always want to do this for other people and try to solve these problems. But like, I've realized like my problems are not other people's to solve. Mm. And there were a lot of moments where I was really low and I felt like I was feet, you know, constantly looking for validation or sharing this with family. But I realized how my stresses and how some of the situations I didn't handle the greatest, mm -hmm. the effect it had on them because they loved and cared for me. And that was selfish to them. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it wasn't their responsibility. I also realized, um, which is why, again, I've, I, I make such a conscious effort to um, work with a performance coach and my therapist because it's selfish to myself not to be able to understand some of these situations so that I can live my life to the fullest. Interesting. Yeah. Yeah. And I, and I've always had difficulty putting myself first. Um, and yeah, especially this last 12 months I've made, I, I put as much as I possibly can into, um, creating a safe space for me mm -hmm. so that I can continue to grow. Um, and also, so I can understand the things around me yeah. and not develop like resentment mm, or huge. victim mentality yeah. or, you know, why is this happening to mm -hmm. me? Um, and I also want to just be solution oriented. Yeah. So it sounds like the last 12 months have been very conducive to a life yeah. that you, that you love and that you want to maintain. Was that by choice, by design, or do you think kind of always having this approach to your life, it was just compounding success that all of a sudden you're like, you know what, you know, yeah. the last year has been good kind of thing. I've, I, I've had to pivot and make transitions in my life uh, numerous times mm. um, from basketball to football in college, NFL, modeling industry, business, uh, obviously public figure right now, but um, and I think also like after going through a stint with COVID and, you know, a very public situation, um, I think whenever there's big life changes, you got to reevaluate a lot of things and see exactly where you are and what your voice is. You know, mm -hmm. that's not saying it's suppressed, mm -hmm. but, you know, it's always evolution. Yeah. Um, and I, I try to look at it that way. This year, I finally said... I'm building my own shit. <laughs> like I, I put out so much for so many people yeah. and so many things. And, you know, they talk about the like, main character mentality. Mm. Like that's, that's, that's where I'm at. And I couldn't do that without boundaries. Yeah. Um, and I'm very proud of what's happened this year, man. Like, um, all, a lot of things I've always dreamed of as a mm. kid have happened in the last 12 months. Um, it, you know, 
from the docu series mm. I'm, I'm working on i actually am working on a second one now too oh, amazing all right cool Congrats. um yeah. you know i've opened myself up in a way uh without fear in a relationship mm. um i'm covering you know nfl games i'm producing it like i could i could go down the list um but this year has been entirely focused mm. on um doing the things that i want to do that serve me and my purpose mm -hmm. and what I believe is the future. Do you feel confident in your ability to keep on this path because of the boundaries you have set for yourself and the clarity it sounds like you have for what you want in life and what your priorities are that are definitely going to serve success, I think, and stack the conditions in favor of success. Do you ever worry about them no longer being in alignment with maybe what you're working on. And if you do kind of have that crossover, how do you navigate it not feeling right in here? Yeah. Um, like I say, I don't really operate from a place of fear. So I'm not fearful that mm -hmm. things are going to really fall apart. I think there's always like a little bit like, oh, you know, I don't want this to, sure. to not yeah, work. Yeah. Um, but through boundaries, like, I know the path that things are on or the path that I want them to continue mm -hmm. on for the rest of my life. And I know that um, I've had to turn away a lot of things and kind of go into this, mm -hmm. this tunnel vision mode, but I know that it's set the foundation uh, to, to have success, success in a lot of areas of my life. Um, so I think it's, it's just staying consistent with mm -hmm. um, what you want and yeah, I don't. I, I guess I've never really. It's funny because you asked me that question, and I was like, I've, I've never really been like, oh, is this going to go away? Can't relate, bro. Sorry. <laughs> no, I I, I feel not very certain yeah, about yeah. where I'm at in life, mm -hmm. and I that's a great feeling. Um, I feel certainty in a way I've never felt in mm -hmm. this many areas of my life right now, and that's that's like a powerful thing to feel. Let's say someone listening right now is in a place of uncertainty. Yeah, uncertainty with a relationship, uncertainty with a job, uncertainty with the direction of their life. What advice would you give them to, to endure adversity through that, that endure that uncertainty? Yeah. I, I mean, I, I think first and foremost, like you have to give yourself some grace mm -hmm. and understand that everyone goes through these, these times. Um, I think the more action you take, it limits insecurities. Um, and you just, you, you got to try new things. I think, I, I, I think action is the number one thing I could say. Yeah, I was going to ask you, you know, what do you mean by that? I, I think I, I really vibe with action, taking action to definitely at least just shake you out of that headspace of uncertainty. But yeah, yeah. if we're uncertain, how do we take the right action? It, yeah. And, and I, honestly, I went through that this year. Um, I, I was almost frozen at times because I wanted to make the right decision. And while constantly I was moving forward in so many areas, but I was so focused on making the right decision um, and not having a decision, like affect everything else in my life. Uh -huh. Um, uh -huh. and that was me just being fearful of stuff that hadn't happened, you know, and stuff I in the future feeling anxious yeah, about or like, you know, trying to, exist. yeah, make assumptions or anticipate. Mm -hmm. Um, but I also realized that like, I, I can make mistakes. That's okay. Mm -hmm. But also I, I can't control everything. Like mm -hmm. if you try to control everything, like, you're setting yourself up for failure because it's, it's, it's just not happening. Um, but the uncertainty thing also, it helped me a lot by surrounding myself with people, um, that I trusted and that were doing mm -hmm. things in a, an area that, um, I admired or I looked up to and respected because I think environment is an extremely in, in, important times a hundred, man. Absolutely. Oh, it's, yeah. it's yeah. so, so important. Yeah. And I also think, you have to take a deep look at yourself as well mm -hmm. and understand what areas should you exit, Oof. right? Yeah. And it's so hard to, to walk away from things at times, but like, I think that's again, where these boundaries, these priorities, mm -hmm. like these limitations um, are like, you, you have to really, really focus and hone in on those. But one of my friends is a, is a, a great therapist and he's like, you know, in every relationship, honestly, like what the most successful ones 
are the ones where someone knows they have an exit. They just don't have to take it because you're not leveraged and you don't that's feel trapped. That's the truest freedom, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and I know that that's an approach that um, I, I've been able to kind of take in, in mind mm -hmm. in, in, in the healthiest way, mm -hmm. right? Um, but I, I would say those are some some different options on how I would say to navigate it. Mm -hmm. um, it it's tough though, mm -hmm. it's tough. Speaking of tough, I, I know you're in a great happy relationship now, but mm -hmm. it doesn't sound like you all live in the same city and you've already said how much of a travel and you know jet set life you have. We're talking about certainty here, right? And I think a lot yeah, of people yeah. struggle with certainty in relationships when they're next door to each other mm -hmm. in the same city. How do you kind of navigate certainty? How, how do you and your partner now maintain that level of certainty with each other when you're not together that often? Yeah, I think like I, I think it's on, honestly like it, it's constant work, right? But I, I I I know the foundation of our relationship was built in the right mm -hmm. way. Um, I never have insecurities about you know faithfulness or anything, mm -hmm. and I know she doesn't as well. Um, I think it, the biggest thing is just you have to make conscious efforts to make your partner a priority. Mm -hmm. um, we both have so many things going on in life. Um, and what I always try to hold on to is, you know, everyone wants to be made to feel important. They want to know that they matter. Um, and they want to know that they're not in it alone. Mm -hmm. Um, and I think when you can kind of approach it in that way and also understand relationships aren't mm -hmm. always 50, 50, yeah, yeah. everyone, yeah. if you think it's that way, yeah. it's, it's a night. You're always looking for fairness. You're always looking for, Dude, it's not always going to be perfect. Exactly, yeah. Like it can be 80, 20 and, um, I, like I know that and I've learned that through through times mm -hmm. the pendulum swings right because it has to otherwise mm -hmm. things aren't sustainable but um you know I've been very very blessed and very very fortunate with someone who trusts me who's very secure who grinds mm -hmm. you know she works hard she's got a great heart um and I think the number one thing that we we have to continue to focus on and we do a great job of it is just understanding that with all these other things going on mm -hmm. Like, you know, we have to make sure that each other is a priority. Yeah. Um, and I've never really had someone that I could like, felt like I could go to war with. Mm. Um, and it, it, it's a good feeling. Yeah. It, it really You know is. when you got that. Yeah, you yeah. Sure know when you yeah, got for that. sure. Love you, baby. <laughs> um, a unique question kind of popped up in mind then. So I'm happy to hear that. I love hearing people in, you know, meaningful, fulfilling relationships of any kind of capacity because I'm there, you know, I've, I haven't been there before. It's like, when you know, you know, but also yeah, yeah. like when you feel great, you feel great. Like you don't know how good, good can feel. You don't know how mm -hmm. that relationship can feel when you're in the nice, healthy relationship. Yeah. But someone like yourself, who you've even said, it's hard for you to kind of ask for help. You know, you seem to just be able to endure. How do you drop that wall with someone in your life right now? Because being able to endure is great and well for you. Yeah. And, yeah. You know, someone like myself as well, but Personally speaking, that was a big area yep. in my relationship. She's like, hey, you need to you need to let me in. You need to kind of let me carry some of this stuff with you or for you. Just because you can doesn't mean you should all the time. Have you had to navigate that at all? Yeah, I, I feel like um, I feel like I've done a much better job in this mm. this than I, I ever have before. Um, but I think that's again, it is a constant uh, is con is a constant work in progress. Um, I think I've probably honestly been overly open mm. and overly, not overly, actually, let me take that back. Yeah. I've been extremely open and vulnerable. Uh -huh. And I did this up front um, because it was important for me, to, uh, for my partner to know exactly where I stood. Um, and also I wanted to see what they would give give me, right? Oh, nice. Okay. Because yeah. I can receive right. that, but how can I, I, I can't expect you to open up and share all these things with me if I'm not willing to do it with you. You can't get anything close to what you're not going to give. You yeah. Know? Yeah. And I think that's just how I've approached it. Mm -hmm. And it allowed us to to build things in a, a very proper way. But you, like, you know, it's it's a constant work in mm -hmm. progress. Right. Mm -hmm. And I don't take any time for granted. Um, and we've had to, you know, set boundaries within our relationship as well to uh, protect uh, one another because I know for me, my greatest strength um, 
is also my greatest weakness when it comes to mm. uh, being able to endure and just put stuff behind me. But I also want, I'm, I'm a problem solver mm. and I provided for my family so much. And I, I always think in my mind, like, oh, it's all good. I can carry the weight of five people and I, I can. Uh, but, you know, with the right partner, you don't have to do that all the time. Yeah. Um, thank you for that, man. Appreciate yeah, that yeah. honesty. So I know you're working on a lot of cool projects now. We already started kind of talking about if you, yep. you're able now to kind of step into another version of yourself that sounds like it's been with you all along, you know, this, this creator, this producer, mm -hmm. this, um, bringer to lighter <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. of meaningful things. And I know you have a great partnership relationship with the special Olympics. Yep. Can you kind of talk to us about what is that? What does that look like? What are you doing? And, you know, I've never really kind of, I've never highlighted this on the show before. Mm -hmm. I'm pretty ignorant, to be honest. So I would love to know, like, what is this organization doing these days? And you know, what is your involvement? Yeah, so uh, I've been involved at a local level since I was young. My sister, Amber, has physical and intellectual disabilities. So I was always very aware of Special Olympics. And I saw firsthand how mm. um, they gave my sister a chance and provided resources that we never could as a family. Um, and in 2015, I, it was the off seasons. And I remember seeing something about the world games in mm. Los Angeles uh, on a billboard. And I was like, all right, like, I, I want to see if they need any volunteers. I'd love to, you know, support some of the athletes. This is something that I did um, back home. And I show up uh, for the event they scheduled for me, the Unified Sports Experience, thinking it's going to be something small. 7,500 athletes oh, from 180 okay. countries. <laughs> it took over LA. Damn, damn. Um, and I used to say I could never coach. I always thought mm -hmm. like I could player development and all that. And But I, I just was like, I could never be a coach. But in that moment during the unified sports experiences, I, I, I got it. Wow, wow. There's something so special and so transformative about being able to, to be a part of a life-changing moment for someone, but I experienced that like 10 times in the day. Mm -hmm. And not only that, I got to see the real, real global work that they were doing. And I also had the personal connection, like mm -hmm. they saved my mm -hmm. sister, mm -hmm. you know? Mm -hmm. um, and I've just been very, very involved since then because, uh, you know, for me, I, I feel like I found a lot of purpose through the organization. Really well. Um, yeah. And now as I think about um, the projects I'm working on now, like, I, I want to raise as much awareness as possible mm -hmm. um, and do it in the right way with nothing to gain other than like seeing seeing growth yeah. and seeing people be affected in a positive way. And I know you're going about it not only in those ways, but yep. you're literally bringing it to life, high production, doing all these yep. things. I actually want to kind of pick your brain a little bit about because you have such passion for this stuff mm -hmm. and you know, even someone like yourself who has already been on TV and has already stepped out onto the field and you know, is bringing a lot to the table, you still hit walls. You still hit snafus. Oh, for sure. You're still hitting delays and del months, years. <laughs> this has been even, a learning you know? process. How do you navigate that when you're not only able to endure these things, mm -hmm. but like, yo, come on, we, we, we got the people, we got the resources, we got all the things, you yeah. know, we have the mission. We have the mission that matters mm -hmm. so much right now. How do you navigate those walls? Yeah, I, I mean, my heart, and passion is so invested mm -hmm. in in this docu series, um, and oh shit! Sorry, the knock messed me up. No, we're good. Um, I got it. It just threw me off. <laughs> I could just pick <laughs> the, it the up. Knock. Okay, yeah. I'll just pick it right up. Um, yeah, I mean, I don't know. You just gotta fucking keep going. <laughs> I mean, yeah, really. That's what. Yeah, that's what uh, ultimately comes down to. But. but I've, I've learned a lot this year and had an accelerated, um, an accelerated course on how mm. to produce a docu-series. Okay. I, you know, I think from like the creative angle, um, I'll pick up here actually. Right. Okay, cool. Um, um, yeah. So you want to pick up where you were kind of describing the, the yeah, just, I guess how you keep going. Okay, cool. Yeah. Let's go back there. Yeah. I, I mean, this year has been a lot of, of learning. Um, and I think anytime you're passionate about something, it makes mm -hmm. it easier to keep going. Uh, but you know, the, the industry has been frozen in a way that it hasn't been in 15 years. Yeah. Um, yeah. and while There's it's a been, huge writer strike and a lot oh, of things going on, yeah, yeah. Like nothing new is really happening. Yeah. Um, but I think I've always just held on to like, this is going to happen. There's no question mm -hmm. that it's, it, um, 
it's not going to happen. Um, and I also realized that I just had to let con- let it, let go of control and a lot a of little st- bit of surrender, yeah, kind of thing. Yeah, but I built a team properly. Mm-hmm. Like if I was going to do this, and I'm you know telling this from a look at you know my experience with the organization and having mm-hmm. a sister with ID, um, I was like I have to find the best in the world to do this because that's what I believe this project can be um, and deserves. Yeah, it deserves it. The organization, these athletes, their families, um, and. I I ended up uh, signing with Radical Media, Mm -hmm. which is an Academy Award winning production company and one of the Mm -hmm. best in the world. And I know that I have their support and and they've really helped me through this. So I'll be in Berlin, Germany um, during the World Games. This will be my fourth World Games. Um, And we'll still be capturing some things out there, the stories. But Mm -hmm. we sat down with every major streamer um, Mm -hmm. in their offices. They love the project. Um, So this is something that's going to happen. And it's it's just a matter of when. Kind of looking back on your life now with everything that you've gone through and everything we've talked about, is there anything, I don't want to say regret, but is there anything that you feel like, you know what, Dale, you didn't have to endure that alone. Mm-hmm. You know, I think again, hindsight is twenty twenty with a lot of things in life. Right. But I realized that, you know what, actually, if I didn't have the courage or if I didn't have the voice or if I didn't know how to ask for help, there were people around me that were wanting to help me, but I just, for whatever reason, couldn't see it. And I couldn't let them in. Is there anything maybe looking back that you would have wanted to endure less on your own? Yeah. And, and, you know, kind of had somebody that could endure that with you. Yeah. I I think there's been numerous times within my life where, when I was going through tough situations, um, it it never consumed me, but I would Mm -hmm. isolate myself from people. And I, I realized that I was, I was causing myself, I thought it was like me kind of recharging and like I was just handling it and coping. But I realized that a lot of times I Mm -hmm. sat in that, that negative headspace Mm -hmm. far, far longer. Um, but you say it was more you in retrospect running away from it. And at the time feeling like, no, this is what I just need to do in order to process this in a healthy way. I think it was a com- combination of both. Mm-hmm. Um, and it wasn't until like I actually started working through things and under like really doing work to understand where like emotions and things would trigger mm-hmm. um, that I actually realized like, uh, you know, there's times for recharge, but I would like, you know, that I think that's why I love New York so much because it's my island that I could escape <laughs> to. Yeah. Uh, but I realized it wasn't it, it wasn't always the best situation, and it just kept me in some time uh, some some negative headspace for far longer. But I don't I don't regret things. I don't I don't really regret too many things. Actually, it's hard for me to pinpoint because I truly believe if I make a conscious decision to do something, mm. like. I'm in it. Like, that's why I can have certainty. If I commit to something or someone like I'm in it, Mm -hmm. like, um, but I also am consciously accepting, um, what happens if it doesn't work out. And I know that I'm okay with that because through like, I know I'll be all right. Um, and I'm not afraid of something not working or failing, Mm -hmm. but if it's something I believe in and I love and I care about, the thing that will eat me up is if I didn't give it a chance. So that's that's way worse for me um, than you know having to go through some headache and some heartache and yeah. have something just uh, not work out. Is there anything right now keeping this flow of endurance going on? Is there mm-hmm. anything going on right now in your life that you would want to share? Kind of let's take you know high level you know. Dale, look down on Dale right now. Like, you, know, um, you don't, you don't need to endure this as much as possible, as much as you think you do right now. You know, and are you dealing with this in a healthy manner? Yeah. What, what would you kind of say to him? Um, I think if there's a message um, I could share just with mm-hmm. people, or like the things you want most in life you have to be willing to walk away from if they don't serve you because otherwise you're completely controlled by them. And that's not saying like run away from things, Mm -hmm. but I think for me, that's been a very, very powerful thing because it's like, I've learned that things don't always work out the way you plan. More often than not. Yeah. Yeah. More often than not. Um, but I think there's so much power and also understanding that if shit hits the fan, Mm -hmm. like you've got the, the strength and the endurance to, to, to figure it out. Um, and 
I think it's important for people to really understand the value of like not being afraid to put themselves first at times mm. because we're in a day and age where so many people and so many things have access to us. Um, and it's so easy to get lost in uh, whatever it is, the job, yeah. um, you know, social media and all these things. And we don't even fully realize it sometimes. Yeah, it's for like, sure. Oh shit, where's my mind? Yeah. Where's the time gone? You know, yeah. why, why am I so anxious? You know, yeah. it got me. Yeah, no, I, I agree. And I, I think one thing that I, I wish I would have done earlier um, is not tried to always protect myself. Mm. I think naturally as human beings, you know, our body's response, our brain's response is to survive. Yeah, safety, survive. Security. And I, I say protect myself as like, um, I've worked really hard to create safe spaces for me mm. and they are safe. But I, I also understand that um, through certain fears and our, yeah, I say fears, but just certain experiences in life mm -hmm. um, that I would hold on to, um, the idea that like, you know, I couldn't trust mm -hmm. people mm -hmm. or I couldn't trust a situation. Um, but I, I do believe that I've really, really let go of that. And yeah. a lot of that's been through the work of like just understanding the triggers from childhood and like, you know, understanding where things that's have happened episode. throughout my life. Yeah, man. But I'm so glad you're hitting all these things because yeah. even just for somebody to hear these things from you that in a quick high level version mm -hmm. or actually in depth, they all matter and they all have served and they all have created and continue to maintain the version of Dale that we see right here today. So yeah, yeah it's not for not. Yeah. And I, I think that, you know, people have this negative connotation with um, asking for help. And the reality is like no one does it alone. And I think Truth. especially when you can find a space that you feel safe in and just like get it off your chest, um, have an unbiased uh, view on it mm -hmm. um, and come from a place of understanding. Like I want to understand myself. I want to understand this world. I want to take my emotion out of this situation because I don't want to be controlled by my emotions. I just want to, I just want to understand it. Are you guys hearing this stuff? It's powerful. It's so man. powerful. It's so necessary. It, it's, it's allowed me to not build resentment. Mm. I, I, I'm not meant to hold hate. Like it's allowed me to weather any storm. And I think that's really wanting to come from a place of understanding and how to make things better. Dale, this has been incredible, man. Uh, I love your journey. I love your story. I, I love the insight and perspective you have on your life, on the things that you have to endure as they come down the line. Yeah. But also looking back, man, uh, it's exactly everything I'm talking about when I say live a life ever forward. But mm -hmm. I would love to get your interpretation of that. When you hear those two words, what does that mean to you? Yeah, it seems so simple, but like, because I just go back and listen to the episode. You know, yeah, but. I I think it's belief and faith, man. Mm -hmm. it, you're always going to move forward if you have belief and, mm -hmm. and faith. And I also believe that you have to reflect um, in order to 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 really really go forward in the way that you're meant to. Um, and that goes mm -hmm. back to understanding. Mm -hmm. um, I think a lot of times I have put stuff in the back of my mind and amazing trauma, like all these things. And I was just mm -hmm. like, oh, it's not there. Um, but the more that I reflect and really try to understand those things, it's changed my perspective mm -hmm. on life moving forward. Mm -hmm. And I'm just like, Phew. so that's, that's allowed me to have more faith and belief because I can navigate anything that comes, comes my way. I know that. Hell yeah. Hell yeah, man. Uh, well, this has been great. Thank you so much again for your time on the show. Yeah. Uh, where can everybody go right now to connect with you more? We'll have everything listed down in the show notes and video. But uh, what are you doing most these days? How can they support? Where can they connect? Yeah. I mean, I mean, the biggest thing, I, I share portions of my life on Instagram at Dale Moss 13. Mm -hmm. um, TikTok, you know, I'll be on there every once in a while, the Dale Moss. Um, but I think the biggest way uh, to support, like if you hear this, reach out if you have any questions. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm really focused on sharing a lot more about my health wellness, mental health. Um, I want to do things that impact people mm -hmm. in, a, in a very positive way and provide value. Um, and you'll see a lot of things coming out that I think really, really show and dictate that. No doubt, man. I'm already seeing it. Uh, it's been <laughs> great getting plugged into you. Um, shout out Heather, mutual homie here for making this happen. Sheesh. Yeah, but Thank you, uh, all right.